Hi, this is Dr. John Bergdorf. In this video, I want to show you a few simple geometric constructions that you can perform as long as you have a pencil, a ruler, and a compass. First, we're going to simply draw a circle with a diameter of two inches. So to do this, what we do is we take our compass, let's turn this the right way, much better, the pointy end, we're going to place at the end of the ruler, and then I'm going to move the pencil so that it matches exactly one inch because a circle of radius two, of, of diameter two inches would have a radius of one inch. Then what I simply do is I place the pointy end on the paper and gently create a circle by moving this around all the way. And there we have a circle. So that's not too hard. Construct a congruent angle. So two angles are congruent if the measure of the angle is the same. And creating a congruent angle on a, or copying an angle to create a congruent angle is actually pretty easy. Here's an angle I'd like to create a, a congruent copy of. What I do need to do is take my ruler and just draw a line segment to serve ultimately as one side of that angle. And don't worry if I make that, if it's a little bit too long. Um, the important is the measure of the angle, not the length of the sides. Now what we do is this, uh, put the pointy end of the compass at the vertex of the angle you want to copy. Stretch it out enough so that you get a good arc and draw that arc like that through the angle. Now what we're going to do is over here on the, the copy line, again, put the pointy end right there at the at end, at the beginning of that ray and draw an arc using the same, I haven't changed any of the measurements, and just kind of draw that. So it's pretty big, clearly that it would be far enough to meet the other side of that angle when I copy it. Now, back on the angle itself, put the pointy end right where the arc you drew crossed one side, change the measure or change the position of the pencil so that it'll be exactly the distance from this crossing point to this crossing point. I think I've done that pretty well. Then go over to the new line, place your pointy end here and draw an arc so that it crosses the other, the, the first arc you drew. The distance from here to here will be the same as the distance from here to here. So if I connect this beginning vertex of this angle to the place where the two arcs cross, I will have exactly a congruent angle. And again, this side may be too long, but the important uh, part of congruent angles is that the measure of the angle is the same and that will do it. Next, we're gonna construct a congruent triangle. Now for this one, what we wanna do is start at one, ang one vertex. Let's say we start at this one and let's measure the distance using my compass from that vertex to one of the other vertices, say maybe over here. So I move, I expand my, uh, my compass to where the pencil will hit right here on the other end of that particular side of the triangle. Now, start by drawing a line segment. Again, don't worry much if it's too long, but make it definitely obviously longer than the bottom side of this triangle. And if I don't move my settings on my compass, I place the pointy end right here 
and then draw an arc over here like that, this distance will be exactly the same as this distance. And so that means that you'll have a congruent side. Then going back to the original vertex on this triangle, measure the other side. So adjust the pencil so it's exactly the length of another side of the triangle. Place your pointy end here and draw an arc up in that direction, kind of where you expect that, that vertex will eventually be. Then do the same thing with the other side. Measure this side by placing the pointy end right here. Move the pencil so it's exactly the length of this third side. And if I start at this crossing point, which would represent this, the, the copy of this vertex, and draw an arc from there, this point here is this distance from this point, and it is also this distance from this point. So that will exactly copy that triangle if you join this vertex to that crossing point, and then this vertex to the same crossing point, and you have an exact congruent copy of that triangle. Now, maybe one thing I should have said before I got started, I have my paper on top of a pad of paper it is rather easy for the pointy end of your compass to slide around a bit. And because that can happen, uh, it's nicer if there's something that it can stick into other than like a, the hard desk surface. Well, let's, okay, let's do a couple more things. Let me show you how to bisect an angle. So I'm thinking of drawing a line segment that would exactly cut this angle in half so that the measure of the angle I'm gonna draw is exactly half the measure of the given angle. Let me refocus briefly here. I just got out of focus a little bit there, perfect. Now here's how we do that. Uh, first thing we're going to do is we're just gonna draw a random arc with the pointy end of the compass at the vertex of your angle move the pencil so that it uh, will clearly, when you draw an arc, will hit both sides of this triangle, of this angle, sorry. It's like that. Doesn't matter exactly what that length is, just don't let it be so long that it goes off the end, or so small that it's hard to work with. Then what you can do is take the pointy end of your, uh, of your compass, don't change the measure any, don't have to. You actually can change the if you, measurement if you want to. I'll, I'll say what's really important in a minute. And out here in this region where you expect the bisector will go, draw another arc. And similarly, from this point, now this is the place where it's really, really important that you don't change the, the position of the pencil from the, first, the previous arc you just drew. Draw an arc from here, they will cross each other. And because this point is the same distance from this point as it is from this point, this will exactly divide the angle in half. So draw a line segment from the vertex of the angle to the place where those two arcs cross. And it should look like an exact bisector of this angle. And that looks pretty good. Next, let's bisect this line segment. And on this one too, um, I, I want to start by drawing an arc. Put the pointy end on one end of the line segment. Expand the compass so it's clearly more than halfway to the other end. And then draw an arc up above the line segment, and without changing its distance, 
also below. Now again, don't on for this, don't change the position of the pencil. Move to the other end of the line segment. And from there, draw a line, uh, an arc above and below. So you can see, clearly see where they cross. These two points are the same distance from both endpoints. So the line segment that would join those two will bisect that line. And furthermore, it will also be perpendicular. And you can see that. The last thing we do is a little bit tricky. This is, this is one where you may not be 100% lucky in, in making this look exactly correct because um, you have to be super precise. I want to circumscribe a circle around this triangle. And in other words, I want to create a circle that will just hit each one of the three vertices that we have. And the way I will do that is I'll look, I need to find the center of that circle I'm going to draw. And that's going to be the place where the perpendicular bisectors of each of the three sides meet. Now, you really don't have to do a perpendicular bisector of all three sides. Just pick two of them and you'll be fine. So I'm gonna start with, let's say with the bottom side and much like I did on question five, I'm going to set my pencil so it's clearly more than halfway to the far side, the far vertex over here, um, but not too big, not too small. And then I'm gonna draw an arc above and an arc below and go to the other end of that side without changing the length in any way. And Here's where I'm going to try to be super precise. Arc above, arc below. The line segment joining those two meeting points of the, of the two pairs of arcs will be a perpendicular bisector of the bottom side of this triangle. So I draw a line segment like this. Then I just pick another side that I want to find a perpendicular bisector of. Doesn't matter whether it's this side or this side. I'm gonna pick this side just because I don't know why. Um, put the pointy end of the compass at one of the vertices, make sure that the arc will be more than halfway uh, across. I'm gonna think, I think I'll make it just a little bit different so that I don't have it, the exact same arc here. Uh, let me make it just a little bigger, maybe. And from here, I'll make an arc above and an arc below. Uh, well, that'd be below, wouldn't it? And an arc above. Looking at this side right here, I think I may have to go a little farther. Similarly, from the other end, an arc above. Oh my goodness, I barely made it. Those have to cross and an arc below, these will definitely cross. Like that. And then if I connect this crossing point to this one, I will bisect, or get a perpendicular bisector of that side. Like that. Point where the two bisectors cross should be the center of the circle that's going to circumscribe the triangle. So if I were to place the pointy end of my compass right there at that crossing point and set the pencil so it just reaches one of the other vertices, one of the vertices of the triangle, it should be about the same distance to this one and also to this one looks pretty good. And so we were going to draw a circle. I'm sorry, my hand's in the way here. But I'm drawing a circle with that center all the way around. And in a minute, we'll have a reveal. There we go. That came out pretty good. Uh, that circle completely circumscribes that triangle. So we'll do some more constructions in another video. But 
I hope that's a nice start.